Hello everyone, my name is Broderick Coburn and today I'll be giving you a presentation on the buckling of fibre steered composite structures. This work is led by Professor Paul Weaver at the University of Bristol. So first of all, I'll be giving an introduction into what is fibre steering, uh, how do we manufacture fibre steered panels and what are their benefits. Then I'll be looking at buckling of these fibre steered structures, starting with in the development of an analytical model, then moving on to two case studies uh, seen in practical structures, stiff and variable stiffness panels and variable stiffness sandwich panels. And I'll be presenting some parametric study results and optimization results. And finally, I'll conclude. So uh, fiber steering has been done since the early 1970s. It was originally done with this fiber laying gadget where the idea was to steer around a discontinuity to try and uh, reduce stress concentrations. And since the development of AFP in the late 1980s, uh, manufacturing of more complex structures in a more repeatable manner has been, become a possibility. And more recently, a new developed technique, continuous toe shearing, developed here at the University of Bristol has been developed. Um, but what I should say is with this technique, there is a coupled thickness increase. So this actually can be used to uh, benefit in, in certain applications. So variable stiffness structures have been used for integrated structures. So here this top cylinder you can see has got zero degree fibers up on the top and the bottom of the actual cylinder and 45s on the side. So for instance, if this was a fuselage in bending, it would actually get good flexural rigidity due to the zero degrees at the top and bottom and we'll have good uh, shear resistance as well um, in the sort of the equivalent to a web and an eye, um, an eye beam. It's also been used for discontinuity, to discontinuity, so steering around a hole here will actually um, alleviate stress concentrations. But I'm looking at the actual buckling and post buckling performance of variable stiffness structures. So the main improvement here is if this was simply supported around all four edges, it would actually attract more load to these supported regions. And by getting the load out of the center of the panel, we get improved buckling loads. So it was shown just for a simple linear variation, you can get 80% buckling load improvement um, for a constant thickness panel. However, most studies to date are limited to simple geometries and configurations. So the aim of my work is to start looking at some more uh, structural applications. So specifically, I'm looking at stiff and variable stiffness panels for an aircraft wind skin. So what we might expect to see is a fiber distribution where we actually shift loads towards the actual stiffening elements, which are then required to act as panel breakers, so forcing a buckling mode to occur in between the actual um, skin between the stiffeners. And then I also look at our variable stiffness sandwich panels. So to achieve these, we've got two main objectives. Firstly, to develop semi-analytical methods that are competitive with finite element analysis and then use these semi-analytical methods in parametric and optimization studies. So now we'll move on to the semi-analytical methods that we've developed. So in all cases, we use the rich energy method, and we've shown these methods to be accurate, computationally efficient, and they can capture complex behavior. Um, as I said, it's competitive with finite element analysis and all these um, points. So with stiff and variable stiffness panels, there's uh, a few uh, main things we need to consider. Starting with, we've got discontinuities, due to the stiffener flange. We've got continuous uh, stiffness variations due to the fiber steering. We've got eccentricities due to, again, the flange. Uh, there's multiple buckling modes that can occur in a stiffened panel, such as global and local. And I'm only considering fiber steering in the actual skin of the stiffened panel when we're, we're keeping the stiffness as straight. And then for the variable stiffness sandwich panel, we need to include transverse shear deformations because we've got a thick structure. And these are very important. And these also enable two different modes to be captured. So global buckling modes where the entire panel buckles and local crimp crippling modes. So for both these cases, we need to perform a pre-buckling analysis. Um, this is because we've got the variable stiffness. So uh, compared to a straight fiber structure where we have constant stiffness, uh, constant stress distribution, we actually have a variable stress distribution in the plane. And then we perform a buckling analysis. So in all the uh, results presented here, I'm just considering a piecewise linear variation just with two control points um, on the outside of the laminate to the inside. So we performed an optimization study on a stiff and variable stiffness panel with a genetic algorithm. So just looking at a very light load case of 0.8 kilonewtons per millimeter. We considered, a very, um, we considered practical design constraints such as a maximum strain, Poisson's ratio mismatch, and all the different uh, failure modes that can occur in a stiffened panel. So we looked at uh, three types of skins. So a standard skin looking at standard ply angles, a straight fiber skin where we additionally allowed a plus or minus theta ply, so for instance you could have a plus or minus 55 degree ply and then variable stiffness skins um, manufactured with AFP. So the results show that we can get some improvement, however it's very much reduced from the initial 80% that I presented at the start. 
Um, there's a few good reasons for this, um, but most of the reasons are due to the additional constraints, practical constraints that we introduce into the uh, optimization. So we also showed that if you remove some of these constraints, such as the Poisson's ratio mismatch or the strain, um, we actually get uh, additional improvements. But at this stage, we're looking at 5% for a very small uh, change to the actual stacking sequence. So if we just look at these two top stacking sequences, changing from the 45 to a, a steered fiber angle from 60 to 30, as you can see by this um, uh, graph here, we actually get just the improvement of 5%. And if we even relax the 10% rule in the skin, we can get further improvements, um, an extra 2%. So for the variable shift and sandwich panels, uh, again, we include the first order shear deformation theory. What we've shown that for thick, um, so for very stiff shear modulus cores, you get the same improvements that you would for thin structures. So here we've got a plot of the normalized in-plane stiffness and the, against the normalized buckling load, but this can be considered just the extra design space that you get with variable stiffness. So this dashed line is what you get with straight fiber plies, and these extra other plots are what you get with variable stiffness. So for our high shear modulus core, such as 500 megapascals, you get a 62% improvement. But as you reduce the core modulus, this uh, improvement uh, reduces. So what's happening here is the variable stiffness is actually uh, redistributing loads, which is a benefit for in some cases. However, here we're actually getting local peak in-plane stresses. And what's happening is crippling is occurring um, at a very low load. So in conclusion, we've developed semi-analytical models that are competitive with finite element analysis. And we capture uh, several features that are often neglected in semi-analytical models. So such as the discontinuities due to the flange and eccentricities. And we've shown that you can achieve over 5% mass savings considering many practical constraints which are, are quite limiting. Uh, we believe we can actually push, push this percentage high if we start being a bit more clever with our designs. And with variable stiffness sandwich panels, we showed that um, you can get the same improvement as you do with thin structures. However, um, with a lot of load redistributions and a weak core, you can actually get some crimping modes occurring at early loads. So I'd just like to thank the EPSRC for funding the work and the team led by Professor Paul Weaver at the University of Bristol. Thank you.